Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's third video. We've had a look at the JB season model for today's uh, third video. So we're going to be looking at uh, data for September, October, November. It's going to cover the full autumn 2023 uh, forecast period. And it, of course, is ahead of the third and final autumn 2023 season model roundup that we're going to be releasing here on the channel on Saturday morning. That'll be around 10 a.m. Saturday morning. We're going to get all of the long range ones, get around 15 of them from the World's Lean Forecast Centre to see what they are all showing for autumn 2023 for the third and final time this season. And that is ahead of the autumn forecast from Gazwell that is being released on Sunday. So, uh, always a busy weekend, the last weekend of uh, of August. And, uh, and, yeah, kicking it all off, really, I suppose, is... Uh, is uh, is this, is this video uh, with the JMA season model. The JMA will form part of the season model round upon Saturday, but of course we can get so much information from um, the uh, JMA season model that we don't have time to go through all of that data because we've got another 40 miles to get through. So we always like to take this one out, isolate it out on its own terms and uh, and have a look uh, uh, and drill down into the detail. So that's what I'm going to do for you. I'll get on, get on a bit for you in a second. Just say that the first video is saying, was the 6 a.m. UK weather forecast with release extended just a forecast and we're going to be live streaming at uh, going to live stream at 6 p.m. this evening live stream 10 14 days so I shall see you live hopefully uh, for that one right let's start off then with September so this is month number one in theory this should be the most reliable part of uh, all of it now first of all I'm going to say it looks like a very strange uh, anomaly if that's right there are no obvious troughs of low pressure anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere in September, which obviously can't be right. There's got to be some low pressure somewhere. So the way I would interpret that is the lighter the colour, um, the lower the pressure. So you would look at that and think we're in for a very anti-cyclone September. I'm not sure we necessarily are. We've definitely got an area of above average heights in the North Atlantic. High pressure extending up to us in parts of Greenland. Obviously, there's a big ridge here over on the eastern side of Europe and going to the west of Russia as well. Some ridging is going on through there. So we're putting in some smaller hanches. But down here in this yellow area, I would suspect that in reality will be lower pressure, actually. So I would suspect that more southern parts of the country could have uh, unsettled weather or more unsettled weather during September. And the driest conditions may be actually further north and west towards Scotland and uh, Northern Ireland, uh, closer to this area of high pressure. As September, October looks like that. Now, in October, you have got an obvious area of low pressure, obvious trough, and that is this blue, uh, this blue area into the north of Europe. So there's a trough of low pressure into the north of Europe and the northwest of Russia. We've got a mid-Atlantic ridge going towards Greenland. So with high pressure in the North Atlantic, low pressure over Scandinavia, you would assume we're probably going to open the door to more of a northerly influence in October. So that could be quite a chilly October, actually, quite a uh, quite a, quite a cool or maybe even cold October there. And then November looks like this. Blocking is centering around Greenland and Iceland then. Still with a trough of low pressure into the west of the northwest of Russia. And low pressure is in the Atlantic. Now we are very close, I would have think it's having quite a cold November there with winds coming in from the northeast. A complicating factor is that the ridge seems to be extending down western side of Europe to some degree. With a low pressure in the Atlantic we could actually be starting to pull up like a southerly winds. So it's quite a complicated pattern that and uh, there would be like a um, uh, a convergence line, I suppose. There would be like a, a, an area where where perhaps colder air from the northeast and milder air from the south are sort of meeting. That might be pretty country things could get quite interesting in that area. Autumn overall, in terms of the 500 millibar height only from the North Pole down, um, looks like this with above average heights out to our west um, and northwest and lower pressure around here again it is quite a complicated and strange looking anomaly let's drill down to the detail then by having a look at the truck and mid view so we can't see greenland iceland scandinavia was there's a chart up here uh you can on the top right hand corner of the chart as you are looking at it so we have for september back september by the way we have high pressure center just uh there to the south of greenland and going up 
to Greenland. Uh, high pressure also is extending through to the north of the country and possibly some lower pressure um, beginning to come up from the south, maybe. The temperature anomaly in September is average to slightly above, not an excessively hot signal for September. Um, largely driving average as well, so yes, a little bit on the driving average side. It does look wetter to our south, so I think my interpretation was all that far off, but the mod is keeping most of the wettest weather away to the south of us, really. But we'll be quite close to one thing, I suppose. The mean wind direction, which is always a little bit difficult to make out with black arrows coming in from the east. So an easterly uh, September being predicted by the JMA there, which is relatively warm wind direction in September. Right, going through to October, we find that the uh, mid-Atlantic ridge really strengthens and becomes a bit of a blocking feature towards Greenland. We know there's a trough of low pressure in you know, Scandinavia as well. And uh, I thought that could get wind into more of the northerly. We'll check the wind direction out in a moment. But the temperature anomaly, again, is average to slightly above in October. And another relatively dry month as well. So uh, dry September, dry for October too. The wind direction is indeed turning into more of a uh, north northeasterly here with the black arrows. So, yes, I think that's got colder potential. North northeast is in October. They're going to have a chill to them. They could bring some early season frost uh, with them and uh, whatnot. So, after a warmish sort of easterly in uh, September, we go into a rather colder northerly to northeasterly in October. Uh, right, and then we're into November with this strange looking anomaly of low pressure in the Atlantic. Blocking is up here um, and also ridge down there, so a very complicated pattern. Uh, November also comes out average to slightly above. Notice quite a significant cool down going on for Eastern Europe and Western parts of Russia. It's a wetter month as well, which wasn't particularly apparent on the uh, 500 millibar height. Tonight. But as I say, I think there would be like a divide going on uh, with uh, southwesterlies through here and north northeasterlies through there. And that, of course, can produce uh, quite a lot of rain and, and whatnot. So as the wind direction is concerned, so yes, we can see southwesterlies um, to our south. Over here, we can see easterly winds feeding in uh, as well. So um, we won't be all that far from quite a cold November there, quite a cold wintry November, but it just depends whether it's the southwesters or the east or the east that are, you know, the, the driving factor with that. But uh, quite an interesting uh, month for November there to uh, end things off with. As far as the autumn overall is concerned, with the above average height through here and some lower pressure through there. The temperature anomaly is average to slightly above for the autumn. And precipitation looks like that. So average, generally average to drive and average to most area, but south does look a little bit wetter. I assume that's down to September and uh, to, I assume that's down to um, November rather. And so as the wind direction for the autumn is concerned, an easterly autumn uh, mean wind direction with those black arrows coming in from the east. So um, yes, we, we see that, um, that uh, the autumn could be rather easterly in terms of the season. Right, well, that's it then uh, for the JMA seasonal update. So looking like a rather dry and starting off quite warm autumn, becoming cooler as we get through to October, possibly colder. And then we go into perhaps a much wetter pattern in uh, in um, November with a, with a big divide in temperature from south to north, possibly quite a cold November in the north and a milder month in the south. And the boundary, you know, that's what I was Well, the boundary uh, creates uh, the precipitation to bring potentially quite a wet month. Uh, all speculation, just one model. We've got number 14 to look at, one four, uh, on Saturday morning. Uh, this will form part of that autumn 2023 season by roundup, final autumn 2023 season by roundup on Saturday. And uh, we'll see what the other models have to say then. We're going to be back at 6 p.m. live streaming our 10 to 14 day, so make sure to check that one out for the make sure you're with me for the live stream and you can check it out afterwards if you don't want to watch live. Um, take it out on demand afterwards. Uh, for this video, though, that's all for now, and thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.